Well, the past two Sundays, we have been, uh, been talking about the Lord's work, doing good deeds. And we have learned uh, a couple Sundays ago that God has taught us to be steadfast, immovable, and excelling, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that our labor is not in vain. That's from 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And then last Sunday in Galatians 6, 9, we learned that we must not get tired of doing good, for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. So in a nutshell, from those two verses, we should not allow anyone or anything to keep us from doing the Lord's work. And we also must understand that what we are doing for the Lord is never a waste. It is not a waste of time. It's not a waste of our energy. Matter of fact, it's glorifying God. And we should always do our best when we're serving our Lord. And never, ever give up. Today, I, I didn't mean for this to become a, a, a series, a sermon series, but it has. Uh, it's just uh, what I've been given, and uh, uh, I appreciate it, and... Uh, I hope, it's, I hope it's helpful to all of you. Uh, today I want us to think about how faith relates to our work for the Lord. You know, sometimes in the Lord's work, we, uh, we need more people. We need volunteers. We need money. We need other resources. We need time to do the Lord's work. And we don't want to forget that we also need faith. Faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the story that uh, Deborah just read in Mark 9, uh, over there, Jesus speaks about the importance of faith to His disciples. And uh, Jesus uh, came down, he saw this crowd, and, and they were arguing, and, and uh, he got, got in the midst of that crowd and asked them what they were arguing about. And, and, uh, and of course, the disciples had tried to drive out the demon in this little boy, and they couldn't do it. And uh, so the father saw Jesus, and he ran to him and, and told him about the boy's condition. And in verse, uh, in verse 22, the man said to Jesus, But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And then in verse 23, Jesus said, If you can, everything is possible to the one who believes. And then in verse 24, the father replies to Jesus, I do believe, help my unbelief. There are times when my faith is weak. Too many times. But a lot of times, I will remember what this man said. In verse 24, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And it may be that, that some, are you, some of you are like that. And so we, we need to remember that we need help, even with our faith. And there's another verse in a chapter over in Mark 10, 27, uh, that... Uh, that comes to mind when, when my faith is weak, and that is all things are possible with God. All things are possible with God. There's nothing He cannot do 
I mean, he raised Jesus from the dead, didn't he? He is an all-powerful God. He can do anything. Anything. In Matthew 17, we have uh, that nearly that same story. There's a little bit of a different ending. And in verse 19 of uh, Matthew 17, the disciples approach Jesus after he has healed this boy, and they ask him, why couldn't we drive that demon out? And Jesus answered in verse 20, Because of your little faith, I assure you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Now let's consider what Jesus is saying in, to us in that verse. And could it be, could it be that he is not, he's not saying that it's the size of our faith that matters, but the size of our God in whom we put our faith. Then again, maybe he's saying something else even more important. Maybe Jesus isn't comparing our faith to the size of a seed, but he is comparing it to the nature of the seed. Now what am I talking about here? Well, the nature of the seed is what, what the seed does. And what does the seed do? Hopefully, when we plant it, it grows. And if you don't plant it, uh, you, you're definitely not going to get any fruit. It's not going to bear. You have to plant it. A seed is useless unless it is planted. And faith it's just like that. Our faith is no good unless we, we show, we display it. James 2.14 tells us, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Folks, if our faith does not, doesn't cause us to be active in the Lord's work, then it's useless. That's what He's put us here for. That's why this church is here. To do work in this community. To sow seed. To water those seed. To encourage people. To help them. Especially with their spiritual needs. Well, let's, let's consider some truths that can help us to grow our faith in God and put that faith in action. First, we must look to God as our only source to meet our needs. God is our only source. God's Word teaches us this in Philippians 4.19. And my God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And folks, when we talk about riches in Christ Jesus, He has them all. He owns it all. And He has the power to use those riches through us. The Apostle Paul had written this verse uh, uh, to the church in Philippi because they had given him money and, and I don't know, maybe there were some other resources they gave him to help him in, as a missionary. And they, did, they sacrificed to do that because they, they could have used that money or those resources for their own church. But they saw that Paul had a need and so they, they helped him uh, and and tried to meet that need. And I feel pretty confident that, that Paul knew that they had made a sacrifice here. And so when he wrote to thank them, he also told them that God would also meet their needs. Folks, God will meet our needs for the resources 
for the volunteers and for the time and faith. He will meet those needs as we minister for Him. Where God guides, He provides. Where God guides, He provides. We may struggle with that. And here's why. And I'm guilty of this myself. We get the channel and the source confused. We are not the source. We are the channel. You know how the hymn goes? Make me a channel of blessing. God can do that. We can't make ourselves a channel of blessing. God is the source of our abilities and all of our resources. And they are all good things that God provides. And as the source, He deserves all the credit. He is the one that's doing it. We are the channel. He is the source. He provides spiritual gifts. He provides the, the passion. He provides uh, our abilities, our personalities, even the experiences that we can use in ministering for Him. James 1, 16 and 17 reminds us, so don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God who created all the lights in the heavens, the stars, the moon, the sun. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. The next truth. Whenever we have a need, we must plant a seed. Whenever we have a need, we need to look for something to give away. Why? Because it will demonstrate our faith. For example, some folks have been praying and praying and praying for years, maybe, for God to answer them with a certain prayer request. But God says, I heard your prayer a long time ago. You've never planted a seed. I don't want just prayer. I want action. And that's somewhat of what we're trying to do through the, the, the grow ministry. God rewards our work. Grow. G-R-O-W. We're doing that through mostly writing notes and cards to people, as Deborah mentioned earlier. Hopefully someday we will branch out, maybe do be able to get back out and do some visiting again. I, I'm still making, I'm making a few visits each week. Now, but we want to not just say, well, oh, I've got faith. We, we want to demonstrate that faith. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6, God tells us, remember this, a father, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Folks, we plant a little, we get little. We, we plant a lot, we get a lot. And when we give something away, God gives it back to us. He gives us, and He even gives us more than we need sometimes. So we must share that with others. Third truth. We must expect a harvest. 
If we're trusting God as our source of our supply and we are planting seeds, we can expect a harvest. I'm hoping that, that everyone who's involved in the, in the grow ministry and even others of you who aren't but may come to be are, are expecting to see God work through the writing of cards and letters and, and inviting people to this church and giving encouragement and, and letting them know we're praying for them. Jesus said in Luke 6.38, Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give back, you get back. Folks, God is doing in our ministries what we expect Him to do. Planning little is expecting little. Planning much is expecting much. And when God produces a harvest from our ministry, He does it because we have faith and we expect Him to do it. It's not because we deserve it. It's because we planted a seed. I've seen this happen in my ministry, and I've seen it happen in the ministries of others, and you probably have too. The more we plant and the more we expect, the more results we will see. Now, a word of caution here. God is not a vending machine. Now, you can walk up to a vending machine and, and you see something you want and, and it will give it to you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> uh, but a vending machine gives us what we see and what we want. Even things that hurt us. But God meets the needs. He meets the needs of people because He is a loving Father to everyone who believes in Him. There was a woman who was well known in uh, her community for her simple faith. And there was another woman who had heard about her and she went to see her to learn her secret of the faith. And she asked the woman, are you the one with great faith? And the woman of faith said, no, I'm not the woman with great faith, but I am the woman with a little faith in a great God. A little faith in a great God will supply our needs. And in the process, we will become stronger in our faith and realize that nothing, nothing is impossible with God. Amen. I mean, He can grow this church if it's in His will. And I believe it is in His will, but we have to be ex expecting Him to work and we have to have faith in His work and we must show by our actions that we have faith. Someone said, we live by faith or we do not live at all. Either we venture or we vegetate. If we venture, we do so by faith simply because we cannot know the end of anything at its beginning. We risk marriage on faith or we stay single. We prepare for a profession by faith or we give up before we start. By faith, we move mountains of opposition or we are stopped by molehills. 
great man of prayer, A.W. Tozer, said, God is looking for people through whom he can do the impossible. Many examples of that in the Bible. Many examples of that in this world today. And we can be a part of that. And he went on to say, what a pity we plan only the things we can do ourselves. We must remember, we are not the source. We are the channel. We are to be a channel of blessings for the source who is our God. I close with this paraphrase of Ephesians 3.20. May we grow in our faith and realize that through God's mighty power at work in us, we can accomplish much, much more than we ask or think. Praise God. Let's pray.